It has been another month, which means it is time to unbox this mystery art supply box by Art Snacks. If you guys want to get your own mystery art supply box by Art Snacks, you can get 10% off your first box using the link in the description. So check it out. Until then, let's go ahead and get creative. And holy cow, a way to start. They have sent us a full-sized mixed media sketchbook by Grumbacher, 40 sheets. Very legit, it feels very sturdy and it looks like it has a very interesting, I don't know if it's a gimmick or a feature, but it looks like you are able to remove the sheets of the paper and put them back in however you please, which obviously makes it very convenient to take out one of the pages to stick right here and we can swatch our art supplies. First, we have our monthly sticker with this cute teal gradient and our candy, which is Smarties. And it looks like Sop Casey is just gonna take that. All right, our first art supply is this Plum Chester Fine Liner. And I have to say, I really love the little viewing window inside the cap here. I don't know that it really serves a purpose, but it's really silly and I kind of love it. Okay, I'm actually going to swatch these art supplies by drawing one of my ants, um, because why not? All right, easy enough. I've only drawn this little guy um, probably thousands of times at this point. Who said your swatches had to be just blobs and lines? Okay, I think that's enough for that pen. Oh no, it's my worst enemy. Graphics Art Masking Liquid Pump Marker. I believe I tested this in my masking fluid video. Oh boy, masking fluid is terrifying, but let's give it a go. I actually think this pen might be ripping up the paper, so that's a little troubling. I'm trying to do as few strokes as possible. Next up, we have the Kuretake Zig Brush H2O Petite water brush let me show you what a water brush is all about in case you don't know holy cow this is the most compact water brush i have ever seen it is so tiny so compact what you do is you fill the barrel with water and you've got a watercolor brush you can use without having a cup of water so we're gonna put that guy on hold because we need some paint to use with it it looks like we were randomly chosen to have the gray and pink Kuretake Zig Gansai Tombi watercolor pans. Holy cow, this is the perfect little gray color for an ant. I did not plan that. That was a coincidence. I feel like this brush is excessively leaking out water. We're kind of getting a little, oh gosh, a little too wet. This is never gonna dry. Okay, that's enough playing around with those. Let's move on to our last art supply. The Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolor Stick, and we have red. So it looks like there's a lot of different ways you can use the stick. You can directly draw with it. You can, I guess, extract it onto a palette and put water into it. I think the way I'm going to use it is pick up some of the color with our brush here. And um, we're gonna use it like that, I guess. Anyways, this is what I've doodled really quick by swatching all of our art supplies. Hold on, wait a second. I just realized, oh boy, I've got to remove our masking fluid. So let me just brush your teeth, buddy. Look at that, it came right off. Well, I say it came right off, but there's little tiny chunks everywhere that I need to brush off now. All right, another spot removed with lots of little pieces everywhere, but still safely removed. No leaking, that's good. Oof, yeah, this one's ripping up unfortunately on the edge of the line art, which is so sad. Oh gosh, I'm scared. I also feel like I need to reapply, especially in these, oh my gosh, some of these areas just really got destroyed by the watercolor. It was just way too thick. And now it seems to be gunking up the pen. So that's unfortunate. Oh geez. But anyways, here is our finished doodle. So now that I know how all of our art supplies work and maybe things to look out for, I am going to do some sketches and we will do a more finished, polished illustration. 
So I went ahead and doodled a few things on this side of our sketchbook. Because we do have red and gray and pink, I thought about Little Red Riding Hood. So I thought it'd be really fun to maybe do a redesign of Little Red Riding Hood where the wolf is Little Red Riding Hood. So I've doodled some red things and some different styles of wolves. I just think this one is just so stupid and cute. I really like the hood on this one. And I've just been kind of doodling with this red pin. Sorry, this wasn't in the box, but I thought I would do some additional, I don't know, sketching on maybe the layout. Just really break the wolf down into simple noodly shapes and just have it really fun and silly. Something like that. I don't know why, it's just really fun. Um, let's see. Yes, give it to that goofy V mouth. Oh, we gotta make sure we give the wolf like a basket because the wolf is probably, I assume, visiting its grandmother <laughs> as Little Red Riding Hood does. Kinda wanna get a booty in there. How do you get a booty and a hood? Okay, maybe if, oh gosh, my wolf has turned into a dolphin. Oh my goodness. Forget it, let's give him a tongue. Oh gosh, it's so stupid, but I love it. That's actually really cute, the little short hood. I kind of love that. Um, the booty, everything about this is absolutely silly and I kind of love it. Uh, okay, let's get a final sketch idea here. So I definitely kind of want to combine the two ideas. I definitely want a booty. So let's focus on the booty, shall we? Yeah, I think these are such crude and rough sketches, but I think they are, they're gonna be very silly and fun to play around with. A wolf in a red hood. I love it. So let's flip to a new page and um, get started. Actually, I was about to start drawing when I remembered the amazing feature of this sketchbook is that I can remove and replace the pages because it's on a separate page. I couldn't reference our sketch with our drawing, but now I can. That's a pretty neat feature. I really like that. So let's move on to drawing. Oh, you know what this actually makes me wanna do? Now I actually want to give this wolf a hood that's like, like a hoodie jacket instead of like a cute little traditional little red riding hood hood. Oh, and then I can give him little tennis shoes to match. Oh, I'm getting all excited. Oh, this is so stupid. <laughs> that's how you know I've made successful art. It's so stupid that I love it. So instead of having a cute little bow, we're going to have those little strings that tie your hood shut dangling around. Oh gosh, I love it. A <laughs> very round little booty. It doesn't even look like a booty, hold on. Oh gosh. Okay, I want this wolf to be wearing a sleeveless hoodie because <laughs> I think it would be very silly. All right, um, I think this is pretty much going to be it. Well, I don't know, do I wanna add sleeves? Hold on. <laughs> I thought it would be silly to have him wear a sleeveless hoodie, but now I'm thinking I should probably just give him sleeves. They would be fluffy and cute. Our line art is done, but I thought I would bring out a palette because I do want to make sure that I do have control over how dark my watercolors are. And I thought it would be really fun to mix some of the colors together, maybe to get some variety in what we can work with. I almost forgot we do need to use our masking fluid. So I think I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm just going to add stars in the sky because I'm not, I'm not really sure what else I want to do to this illustration. So I think having little stars in the sky, I was going to turn the background into a moon, but I think I've decided we're just gonna make it a little circular sky. Okay, so I'm going to let our masking fluid dry for a little bit and then we're going to get to painting. All right, so let's start off with the most obvious color and it's going to be the red hoodie of our character. So here we go. Just going to put a basic flat of 
this red color down. Oh no, I forgot that this brush has a tendency to just ooze out water, so I really got to work quickly and not hover in any one area or there's just gonna be a puddle of water. Like right now, I'm trying to be very careful on how I paint around this shoe, which is just causing so much water to just flood the area, so yeesh. I think it helps that the gray, I think, was a bit on the cool side, so it has a bit of a blue to it. So combining that blue with the red creates a purple, and hopefully this looks like a night sky, but we'll see how it turns out. I'm running into the hole. The more I use the brush, the more it just juices out water, so our sky is getting a little bit watered out. All right, putting down a very light gray for our wolf. Oh, I should add some pink onto his booty while it's wet to make him have a little rosy booty. Oh my gosh, that's very rosy. Oh my goodness. Oh no, the more I touch it, the more water. <laughs> oh, this is a disaster. Oh boy. I'm not sure if this is going to be dark enough to shade with, but oh yeah, well. Maybe, kind of, I guess. <laughs> I'm undecided, clearly. I think probably the biggest frustration with all these art supplies is probably the water brush just constantly oozing out so much water that I can't even control how watered down my watercolors are. With every stroke I make, an ooze of water comes out and it's just like, ooh, I never know how juicy it's going to get. All right, for everything else in the illustration, I think I'm just going to fill it with varying darknesses of the gray. So I guess I'm just going to start filling in all these other spots that uh, don't have any color. Well, I say color as I fill things in with gray, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> details I am going to add some texture here and there just to add a little bit extra to it so our wolf needs some hair I don't know what kind of texture spots these are but it kind of makes it look like the baskets made out of stone which for some reason is hysterical to me don't ask why I just really didn't feel like adding a crisscross pattern to it uh, but a basket made out of stone is funny all right, now to tediously remove all of these masking fluid spots, which I am, oh my word, regretting. We will just, ooh, that actually kind of looks interesting. Okay, one last thing I promise. I do feel like I definitely need to go back and reapply the ink in some spots because the watercolor really just muddied them out and they're just a little bit light. Though now that I'm looking at it, it kind of added this nice softness to the illustration. Hmm, I kind of regret going back over it. Maybe I should stop. You know what? I'm actually not going to go through and make the line art darker everywhere. I'm just going to go in where there are shadows just to help reinforce darker areas and separate them from areas that might be just a little bit muddied. All right, so I think that is going to be it for this illustration. I do find that darkening the areas where the shadows hit the line art really helped strengthen some areas in this illustration. Overall, I feel like the tone of this illustration is just very mid-tone heavy and a lot of areas kind of blend together, but it was really fun to play around with the masking fluid in those small little detailed areas. I think that was a really fun part. But you know what? At least the removable sketchbook pages was neat. <laughs> that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to get your own art snacks box, check out the link in the description and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay golden! But before I go, a huge thank you to my patrons for all of their support. You guys are seriously the best. If you want early access to my videos, secret sketches, and more, check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Thank you guys all seriously so much for the support. Bye!